Welcome to Archery Talk 101 podcast, your guide to better archery skills. We'll bring you the latest tips, tricks, and expert advice, but that's not all. We'll also have interviews with top archers and industry professionals and reviews of the latest gear and equipment and much more. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm your host in Archery Talk 101, and we have a special archery guest here from Indonesia uh, joining the show today. Um, Adams, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good today. Uh, this morning and this uh, afternoon, we have just uh, do some archery training. This morning, I just try training a uh, Japanese archery training. And after that, we do some horseback archery training. I've seen that done. I never really... Um even tried it of course you gotta have a horse to do that and i don't have a horse but and so um tell us a little something about yourself okay uh uh i'm uh, just now archery uh at 2015 uh initially i interest with archery because i watch a korean movie called uh war of arrow so I interest with the traditional Asiatic uh, bow because the shape is very unique. And after that, I purchased one Korean bow and then I try to make it, but I surprised that it's so complicated tools and not easy to make. Uh, I am able to make my own bow in 2016 and after that I start to join the archery uh, community and archery competition in Indonesia and the foreign country like Turkey, Malaysia, Singapore and then and I am interested too with the horseback archery. So at that year, I starting to learn horse riding. And then after half year, I start to learn horseback archery. And then in 2017, I uh, got the I got meet the Japanese uh, archery teacher, my first Japanese archery teacher when I visit uh, Japan. Uh, I meet him at the Tsukuba University. He, his name is uh, Professor Matsuo. In, the, in that university, they have an archery dojo, Japanese archery dojo. So I learned from him just a bit just I want to know, but they so welcome to me and I interest with Japanese archery. I purchased my Japanese bowl there in, and I bring back to Indonesia. Uh, the one that makes me surprised is some months uh, after that, my another teacher, uh, junior of Sensei Matsuo, is come to Indonesia. I'm, I'm very surprised because of that. He come with his own money. He paid the ticket and the accommodation just to teach us. We only three participants at the time. So that touched my heart. So initially, I, I'm not really interested with Japanese archery, but after that, I falling in love with Japanese archery, so I practice uh, Japanese archery too. After that, so we grow up, grow up, grow up until now. We training uh, traditional archery, horseback archery, and Japanese archery. By and I'm making the bow too and some archery stuff. Now, what's the difference between um, what you think of as traditional archery, you know, with the, the long bow or recurve and the Japanese uh, archery? What's different about those two? Yes, uh, I think uh, the main difference between modern archery and 
traditional archery. I'm not know well about modern archery, but as a traditional archer, I think traditional archery have a traditional word in there, tradition. So when we when we talk about modern archery, we will talk the type of the bow, for example, recurve or compound. But when we talk about traditional archery, when we talk about what type of the bow, we will say about something cultural. Turkish bow, um, Manchu bow, Korean bow, or Japanese bow. So the bow and the other equipment, the outfit, uh, the quiver, and also there is some tradition that follow that archery, like uh, how to sit, how to walk, how they uh, culture, uh, how they maybe some at some level religion also part some part in the traditional archery and what I feel in traditional archery uh, there is a various uh, type of uh, game like uh, besides we have a standard target shooting we also have flight shooting the the far for this uh, shoot will be right. win yes. and we also have a uh, dynamic shooting either the target is moving or the archer is moving we also have a uh, fast shooting competition we also have horseback archery which is mostly as i know until now horseback archery mostly used with traditional bow so I think that's the interesting parts of the traditional archery. So from what I've seen, the, the bows are different uh, as far as how they're shot, how they're held and the length and everything else is what I've seen um, when I've looked at different, different bows. You know, like the bow you use in Japanese archery is different than that you use on a horse, right? Yes. So how, how do those, what's different about a horse bow compared to a regular, um, you know, long bow? I think uh, I watch uh, in the group, they, they now uh, have a bit uh, debate about this, about the using term uh, horse bow. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I think this is more popular, popularized by modern horseback archer. And now in the groups, uh, most uh, practitioners more accept that call as Asiatic bow. Because when they say horse bow, actually not all uh, this bow is specially designed to to shoot on horse, they also shoot by a foot soldier. Uh, yes, uh, mostly Asiatic bow is smaller, so they they more comfort to use on horse. But we also have Japanese bow that is big, but can be used on horse too. So I think uh, I more uh, agree with the new term of Asiatic bow because yeah because that bow is mostly developed in asiatic uh, area and uh, is is europe i think so there's not really they don't really call it that but it's it's any bow you're using on a horse is up to the archer to pick what he feels most comfortable with then yes yes, yes. yeah so yeah now when people ask me uh is that a horse bow? I, I think, no, don't say it's horse bow. You can yeah. call that bow if you at least shoot one time from a horse. If not, it just, then just call it Korean bow or Turkish bow or Japanese yeah. bow. <laughs> yeah, I'm correct. I, I didn't know that. That's what's nice about you know, getting somebody on that's, that's that done the, the, the multiple different styles and, and shot those different bows. And I've seen some bows that's like, this looks weird. I've seen, I forget which one it is. 
where it looks like almost a complete circle before you string it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> like, but, um, how do you string it? <laughs> because the unstrung shape is like this, but when strung is like this, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's so many different ones and it's, it's interesting to see, you know, the, the different bows and how they're developed and, um, you know, that's that's just one of those things that's kind of interesting about archery because it's it's been around for 64,000 years. So I'd imagine there's multiple, multiple different styles of bows and how they're used. And, uh, you know, like you, you've got, depending on what the archer's job is. Yes, yes. And also depending on what the resource material at that area, like a Japanese bow, the they have a big size design because uh, and the, in the Japan, as I know, they don't have a animal that have a horn, like a buffalo or something else like that. So, so yeah. yeah, and in the Japan, as many bamboo grows. So because of that, they ending with solution with make a big bowl that use uh, with composite of bamboo and wood without horn. I think I think that's also uh, something that affected the traditional bow and uh, traditional archery, the area of the tradition come from. Yeah, I've seen some of the Japanese bows. I don't know if that's what you're familiar with, but it's really long and it's actually longer on top than it is on the bottom. And you draw it back completely different further back. Is that is that how you you shoot them? Yes. Uh, usually, uh, the the other another uh, archery that I learned, they they want to make the, this elbow is straight with this two hand. Yeah. With the elbow is straight in line with with the hand. In Japanese archery, they have a different approach maybe because they have a long bow and uh, longer draw length. So the elbow should strike with shoulders. So more like this over here. So, so I think completely that, further back, yeah. Further back. Sometimes the elbow is a bit dropped to pull more. I, I see some in the ancient pictures uh, depicted uh, technique like that. Yeah, but I've, I've seen some shooting them and it looks, you know, for me, because it's not how I shoot, because I'm not shooting that style of bow, um, it, it looks different. <laughs> not, not strange, it just looks different. And, you know, yeah. depending on what type of bow you pick up is how you shoot it. You know, all weapons if it's a different style of weapon, you shoot them differently. And, you know, yes, I, I yeah. think it would be fun to try some of those other ones. I don't know around here in the Midwest, anybody even has one of those, but I think it'd be fun to, to try shooting some of the different styles. Yes, it's a, a bit a different uh, sensation when we shoot the extra long drill length, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I got my first compound, I was three inches too long, and, and yeah, but with the compound that's different, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, today I, my my study uh, bring a compound bow, and I I try to shoot it, and it, the feel is also uh, special, yeah? a bit different with the traditional bow. <laughs> it's it is in the front, but then so light. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're used to getting harder as you pull it back further. It's not lighter. And, and we, because of the design of the riser, so I, I need to shoot with three finger technique, which is I not comfort yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's. It's strange if you're used to, you know, the, the traditional style of, of bows, you know, the variety of those and get a comp on your hand. It's it, it's completely different. Yeah. Mostly Asiatic uh, artery is used uh, thumb, right? 
and we put the arrow on the right. So when we put arrow on the left, my brain is just not connected. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So you use a thumb ring. Now I'd heard something about the reason they they use the thumb ring. It's a little easier, but they put the arrow on the right hand side, so it actually pulls the arrow towards the riser. Where if it was on the left, it would pull it off if you're a right-handed shooter. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'd heard. I don't, I don't know. So I'm just kind of, you know, verifying is, is that, you know, when you use the thumb ring, I, I haven't really seen, I've seen pictures of thumb rings. I haven't seen anybody use one. Yes, I, I'm also not, uh, not, usually I use shit with bare hand. I'm shot with the tools just if I shot more than 100 uh, arrow. So mo mostly I'm I barehanded. I like to feel my arrow with my touch sensation in the hand. Yeah, I mean, using a, a glove or a release aid of some kind, yeah, you don't have quite that same feeling with the string, do you? Yes, yes, yes. I uh, and and uh, horseback archer, uh, half of horseback archer, as I know, they love to shoot bare hand because uh, it's more faster and and we need to do blind knocking it. So we cannot see when we're knocking. So we just see the target and the where horse uh, running. So when we do blind knocking, some of us prefer barehanded because it's more easy and more fast. You don't have to worry about hooking up a thumb release or anything else, just your bare hand. Yes, and, and we can uh, more flexible. We, there is a, uh, we can use a thumb release like this. And in my country, there is one grip that now become popular. This is called Slavic technique. So if we should be barehanded, we can easily adapt it, these two techniques simultaneously, depending on the condition. That's interesting. I, I never thought about different hand positions in drawing. I'm just always traditional, you know, three fingers, either one above, two below, or three below. and and draw them back to the corner of your mouth and just so many other options in there it's it's, it's cool to to see uh, uh and, and hear about all those different other ways of holding the bow and yeah obviously works <laughs> uh let me explain a bit <laughs> so this is thumb release so we put the arrow on the right side of the handle and then we knock it and you and don't use we... a rest or anything you just use your hand yes i only use uh, my hand and this also able us to use our finger dexterity to to manipulate the arrow so we can I think this makes we faster than maybe modern bow. We cannot use, we can play with dexterity hand in here. So I think this traditional have a, a good for uh, shooting faster with this. Yeah. And then we put the thumb in here. And then we close the thumb with the index finger. Oh, so you kind of wrap your thumb around and the index finger kind of holds the around your thumbnail to hold the thumb in place then. Yes. Is that what you're doing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And index finger also keep the arrow on the bow. So this index finger a bit push to the left. So the arrow is not, will not drop. Oh, okay, so you're actually trapping the arrow at the knock. Uh, as well as locking your finger and all at the same time. And with your holding hand, you're actually holding the arrow so you don't have to worry about it bouncing off while you're riding yes. a horse or whatever. And that's right, that's right. <laughs> and we when we use uh, three finger, yeah, this is bouncy. Yeah. 
Right. So thumb draw in this case, I think, is more stable on the on the horse. This thumb technique also have variation, like the Japanese technique have well, is the uh, index and middle finger, like this. So two, this one. In oh, here. okay. So you so you're wrapping your your thumb around the string, and your middle finger holds the thumb, and then your index finger is right alongside it to help stabilize the arrow on the string. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Oh, and cool. <laughs> also have a variation three finger like this or four finger like this and there is a shallow grip and deep grip japanese usually use shallow grip and another grip that i talked before is slavic technique which is now popular in indonesia it's like this the arrow is still positioned on the right side we shoot like a like a similarly like a three finger but we hold the arrow with this index finger here yeah this technique, pressure on the riser yeah this technique yeah. is more faster uh for some case uh so now this technique is more popular in indonesia among horseback archers <laughs> so that's kind of like that uh, technique well, I can see that that's kind of advantage because one of the problems you have if you put, you know, traditionally arrow on the left side for right handers, one finger above, two fingers below, is you end up pinching it. And as you pull them back, you pull the arrow off the riser. You know, that's why they teach a lot of three fingers below, because as you curl it, you're not pinching the arrow. So you're not pulling it off. Well, this way, if you pinch in and pulling it back, it actually puts it into the riser instead of pulling it off the bow. <laughs> yeah. So that that's and, that, that that's that's kind of cool. I, I'm and our not big, so this is not not beat the the string. It's very loose. So oh. we totally depend on the hand grip. If the oh, so yeah, if, if we not doing the grip well, the arrow is, will, will just drop. It'll just drop off. It's so not Do you put a knock point on there or you just kind of um, put it on we the screen? Knock, usually we have a knock point in here. Uh, this is my not personal bow, so I not still not give it a knocking point. Usually I give a knocking point in here. So if I do blind knocking, I can just put a bit uh, under and and then slide up to it. Slide up to the up. And when we also have some knocking technique, this is uh, we call mamalu technique. And this is we call cup technique yeah. like that because this is uh, like uh, holding a cup yeah. oh yeah we also have a uh, mihai technique like this uh, maybe from this view it's more this is the mamluk technique And this is cup technique. We touch with our pinky finger here to feel the string, and then we pull back. And then we can continue with the thumb, or mostly, uh, friend, if we continue with the Slavic release, this is more faster. Yeah, interesting. And for those of you that only get to listen to this, you might want to go check out the video because this is really cool to to watch watch you doing all that. Yeah, kind of hard to explain, but when you when you see you do it, it's it it really makes a lot of sense. And and I, I might have to go back and play this a couple of times and, and try some of those techniques out. It looks really interesting. <laughs> and and we also have a called a shower technique. Uh, 
So, because we only use uh, thumb, index, and this thumb and index finger, so we have another hand is free to hold another arrow. We can shoot while holding like an extra two arrow in here. We can we can shoot this and then next arrow already on hand. We that makes it shoot really fast. <laughs> yes, this uh, especially there is a horseback archery competition style called Hungarian style. Uh, we shoot at the tower in the center and we we were allowed to shoot as many as possible. So the most popular technique that used in that type of competition is uh, use shower shooting like this because if from quiver one and one it's too slow. So now because we next next uh, next weekend we will uh, hold a provincial horseback archery competition with one of the categories Hungarian style so many of the west java archer now is training this technique because this is more faster <laughs> <laughs> yeah if if the speed counts you you want to have as many many shots available as you can <laughs> Yeah, I I become a jury in the uh, competition, so my I make a rules. At least archer should should shoot at least three arrow with at least one hit to get a time bonus point. So <laughs> <laughs> so archer push to shoot many arrow. <laughs> yeah, the more arrows you shoot, the better, right? <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you do any hunting over there with your bow or or not yeah i'm interested to try hunting actually once i i i have with my friend going to the mountain i bring my bow and i bring my arrow some people say uh, some hunt some hunter also do some hunting on the dead mountain, but at that day we just not meet any wild pig. <laughs> so <laughs> so we just uh, experimenting with the shoot on the on the tree on the forest and and so on. <laughs> So you mostly so, do target. So do you do a lot of target shooting or um, what type of events, archery events do they have over there that you're in? Uh, so, okay. I, what I find in uh, my uh, journey in the forest is I think uh, some quiver do better on the forest and some quiver not good in the forest. I think Indonesian quiver, which is a big quiver, it's more better in the forest the compared to like a Turkish uh, side quiver because when we enter the deep forest, the side quiver I think it can easily struck between the plant. Yeah, so I think back quiver is more easy to maneuver in the forest. And then uh, what I see in Indonesian forest is a bit deep, so not many open field i think the maximum uh, distance in in here is i think 50 meters maximum more than that we will be already got uh, three or another plan I, I think that's why in indonesian history uh, uh, the bow and arrow is not as popular as uh, another weapon i think it takes a little more dedication to get good at it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it don't take near the practice to shoot a rifle <laughs> or a shotgun. We 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 train in the 
shooting field. Uh, so we use the shooting field in in here in Bandung to train a Japanese archery. And uh, once I tried to training with the pistol, but unexpectedly, I shoot better with bow than pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it, it takes lots lots of uh, time, you know. At at, at twenty six yards, I'll hit you much easier with my bow than I will with the pistol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rifle, different story. Yeah, I can go a little further with that, but you know, at that twenty five to thirty yard range, yeah, I'm much more deadly with the bow than I am with it with the pistol. <laughs> yeah. But you can't carry your pistol, your bow around with you all the time. <laughs> yeah, a little harder to conceal a bow. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, firearms is not for public, so not like a uh, United States. So this is only only police and uh, soldier and uh, some registric, uh, uh like a lawyer and etc. That allow it to have a pistol except your criminals always seem to get them <laughs> yeah but criminal uh, yeah. some can have that too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah nice nice to have the bow available <laughs> <laughs> i'm also I'm, I'm always have the bow available in my car <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, always have it with you. Good, good weapon to have with you, and and besides, a lot of fun to shoot, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Bow, uh, riding boots, helm, uh, standby on my car, so I'm shoot able to suddenly doing archery or horse riding. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell us about um, some of your. Uh, shoots you've been in. Uh, let, let's just talk about the uh, shooting from a horse because that seems interesting and, and challenging. Um, tell us about some of the events you was in shooting from horse. Okay, uh, one of the my interest in traditional archery because one of it have a horseback archery. So if I'm not interest with the horse, uh, traditional archery i think i will not interest with the horse riding so in, initially i i learned horse riding in uh, 2016 and i surprise is very hard i think it's horse riding is more harder than doing archery uh, but if uh, we want to do horseback archery we need to learn uh, horse riding and uh, actually at the separate until we reach some level we we, we then allow to combine this two sport together because uh, this is like a two different activity become one yeah. so for me, when I teach my student, I, I the requirement for horse riding to do the horse archery is they able to do riding uh, with one hand and with without hand, and then they need to able to do a half sit. Half sit is like a so basically, in horse uh, back archery, we not sit on the saddle. We kind of like uh, standing on the saddle because if we full sitting, we will bump it like this. So horseback archer uh, came up with a solution: uh, half sit or we not touch our uh, body to the saddle. So we our. Uh, our knee is like a spring that absorb the bouncing. And then for the archery thing, we we need to do blind knocking because on the horse, when we still knocking, looking at the arrow is very dangerous because yeah, the horse can do 
turn or they can sudden uh, stop or something else like that. We need our eye, our focus on the road, on the horse. We cannot, uh, if we not miss our focus on like a knocking thing, it will be disaster. <laughs> so I think that's the 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 basic technique on the horseback archery. So you basically on the horse, you have to learn how to control the horse without using your hands and the reins. Because if you got two hands on a bow, you still got to be able to control the horse. Yeah, sometimes sometime we do like a, a, at the some point, we need to control the horse on the rein. So we can just shooting like the example, I can do this and then something happened that I need to control the horse. So I need, this need to be- You still hold it. I can hold the grip, correct the horse and then continue. And then if something happen again, I need to correct again and then I can shoot. So this is blind knocking is very crucial on the horseback archery because <clears throat> Yeah, and we and we we must at least uh, master uh, three position of shooting, front shooting, side shooting, and back shooting because uh, basically the it's kind of the target is a similar like dynamic target. They will move like so, so. the first when we approach the target, the target is in front. When we passing the target, target will be pushing on the left, and we after that the target will be on our back. So that's the three basic position that need to be mastered on horse uh, archery. Besides that, we have uh, another position like a Turkish cowbuck. They they will shoot target in the aerial in the, the pole eight meter high. And they require to shoot like this. <laughs> Lean way over where you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost horizontal. <laughs> yes, uh, but that's a very popular style eh, in here because it's very hard to get the kabak. So usually my my last national tournament, the spectator will give uh, money on the table whoever archer can hit can take the, the some, some money some another like, clothes or another thing just because yeah it's very interesting <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it <laughs> Yeah, it's that. That's definitely something interesting. It'd be uh, actually it'd be, I think, cool to watch some videos of of you guys doing that. So, yeah, take take some videos if you can. Have somebody take some videos and and post them up to the Art Chalk One Hundred One group, and uh, uh, let's let's take a look and and see some of those. I think it'd be really cool to watch some of those events and it's something different than we normally see you know you normally see you know the olympic archers or you see the 3d shoots and stuff like that i think it'd be really cool to watch some of these other shooting styles and it sounds like it'd be really really a blast to go go try some of that new stuff and you know of course the first time you do it you're not gonna be any good at all but you know hey that's the fun part learn a new skill <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I have a YouTube video. You can, you guys can check on my YouTube. Uh, sometime I post my training and competition there. Oh yeah, we'll we'll have to. Um, what's the name of your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is Numairu. Okay, you know what? Um, if you can throw that YouTube channel either in the chat or in in. Uh, you post, I'll actually bring it up so we can take a look at it and see, because I think that'd be cool to, to see some of your videos. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, you know, let's, let's get people out there looking at your, your YouTube videos. And I think it'd be cool. And I'll definitely go watch some. Sometimes uh, in traditional archery, there is also a uh, curriculum that in, in Japan archery that I learned, uh, there is a curriculum we need to shoot with the armor. So that's also oh. interesting. Oh yeah, wear an armor while you're shooting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually when we not use armor, we can anchor our arrow at the cheeks or at the mustache like that and yeah. but when we use armor we cannot do that we should use a floating anchor because if we touch close to the body uh, the string will get struck on the armor part the helmet oh, or yeah. yeah that's my Thing harder. <laughs> yeah, definitely would. And the, the, the more limited with the armor, yeah. we can can really as free as when we not using it. I just try to see if I could find find your YouTube channel. Did you already uh, find it? No, I didn't find it yet. Okay. I hope I can send the link to. Okay, I can send the link to the YouTube, right? Uh, to the Zoom, right? Yeah, yeah. You the... can go ahead and put it in the chat, and then I'll I'll bring it up, and we can let everybody take a look at it. And... Okay, I will. Uh, will uh, my last national competition will be interesting i think uh, it's on 2019 uh, just before pandemic i win the national competition and the prize is actually i got ticket uh, next year to international competition but hey, Corona is calm and all is canceled. <laughs> yes, you can watch in here. I put on the chatting. Okay, where's my Zoom? Wait, 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 my zoom over here. Yeah, chat. I put on the chat. Yep, that's the link. Okay, we're going to click on that and bring it up. Wait for it to load. My machine's not real fast. Okay, let me share it. Make sure that's is that the right one there? Yes, right. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is location in the city of Tamboro in the eastern Java. So it's around 12 hours from Bandung. We also have a Malaysia team participate as a jury because uh, actually we we mostly learn traditional archery and horseback archery from Malaysia friend. Malaysia friend is uh, more early uh, learning this uh, traditional archery thing. This is we prepare the horse. This is. Uh, some friend use the traditional saddle too, like Turkish saddle, like, like in here. We, uh, when we do horseback archery, we need to sign uh, 
uh, wafer agreement. So because these uh, categories as extreme sport, so there is a probability to get hurt or accident in here. Pretty much any sport you do, there is a risk in it. Yep. But yeah, but yeah, this uh, horseback actually is pretty big uh, risk. Yeah, because we, yeah, that's me. <laughs> this is serial shooting. We we call that lontong track because the target is uh, like a lontong. Lontong is uh, our traditional food. Yeah, we have a. Uh, Several target here. The red is the high score. The, the yellow is uh, two score and the green is one score. Yeah, yeah you're not we, just trotting along. You're, it looks like they're on a full gallop. Yeah, there's a strike track, the, usually a full gallop. And in the final, we have a Polish track. It's like a, uh, it's like a not strike a track, it's right and left, and the target is concealed and not inform how many. It's more challenging. Uh, you can see that on the last uh, part. Yeah, this is still a long term track. We have uh, five target here, and the distance is a bit different from five to seven. Now, this is the Diponogoro track. Diponogoro is actually our hero that fought against Dutch. So we use that as a name of this track. We use a spear. So we have a thrust target with spear, one target and second target. And then we have a throwing spear target on the third. And then after that, we have an archery target on the fourth. Yeah, throw uh, like that. And after throw, we will use our bow to shoot the fourth target. This is the style that I, the competition that I most love because you spear, yeah. I, I love, I practice the martial art and I love this style because yeah, it's you spear to besides bow. Looks like fun. Yes, this is a uh, this is a uh, unique to Indonesian style. Yeah. This uh, style now uh, adopted by National uh, Horseback uh, Association as the Indonesian style. <clears throat> this is the jury from Malaysia. They they are all international archery champion. Uh, they have won in Korean and Jordan and Turkey. Uh, this is the, what I call Kabak target. It's eight meter height. We will shoot it with the blunt arrow and flu flu finest. Yeah. We have one target on ground and the second target is the Kabak. Yeah, that's it's so hard to hit the Kabak. Yeah, I, I can imagine not only is it up high, but you got to bend over in a weird position while you're riding a horse and bounce around at weird angles. <laughs> yeah, if we if we not bend our position, the score will not as big as when we bend our position. So if we just shoot standard, we will got score one. But if we lay down and twist, the score is three. So oh. it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> And this is the last round. This is most interesting. This is called Polish track. Yeah, this the, the track is not straight. So the horsemanship is very needed in this uh, category. We need to steer the horse while shooting. And how many of the target is secret? So we need to search the target on the horse when we compete. I think more than eight target here. I think uh, maybe 13 or 15. So the archer need to look around and when he see target, you shoot. We don't know how many target on the field. Yeah. We need to yeah take the rain and 
steering the horse. Yeah, yeah that's a finish. <laughs> I got uh, I got the third uh, position in total uh, competition in here. That, that's that's definitely a challenge then. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a lot a lot of good competition and, and it just looks like it'd be so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of dedication and lots of work and lots of practice, but uh, uh, looks like fun. Yeah, this is total uh, three days uh, competition. First day is we check the horse, do some bonding, bonding uh, to the horse, get close, uh, and tomorrow we do the the first round. And the last day we do the final round that police track. So it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that's cool. It's like, yeah, you know, and just like I did when you when you're watching this, get out there and subscribe and, and hit that bell for him and you know, let's let's get out here and uh, uh, watch some of this. This uh, this is really cool. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna stop this in the background because there's music playing in there and kind of kind of distracting if I'm trying to talk and carry a conversation and hearing the music, but and and I'd be more tempted to sit there and watch it. <laughs> yes, maybe yeah, after this friends can watch more video on my channel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you're going to have lots of other videos out there, and and we'll just get it here and you know watch some of this stuff. This stuff is is really uh, really cool. And if you click over and you go to a main channel, and I said there's all kinds of stuff out there. So I think you got three like three hundred ninety one videos. So you got quite a few videos out there to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, just make that as a hobby, or so just to keep my memory the, the activity that I love. <laughs> well, and too, you, you get somebody that's interested in some of that. Say, hey, what what is, you know, what is it like to do a horse uh, archery on on a horse? And and now you can just go to your channel, it's like, and watch some of it and see. It's like, oh, this this is a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not an old guy sport though <laughs> to pick up. <laughs> I think riding a horse like that for a while it kind of beat my my whole body up. <laughs> but it'd be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First I'd have to learn how to shoot that bow and then shoot from those weird positions, but then figure out how to ride a horse. Well, I, I've ridden horses before, but not like that. <laughs> not at a full gallop with no hands. <laughs> Maybe interesting if uh, a friend from modern archery try to shoot on horse with a modern bow. I think that will be interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, well, and and you know, you you said you you raise up huge legs, the shock absorbers. If you look at yeah. horse racing, the jockeys don't actually sit on the seat. Yes, yes, they got yes, their head right. down low and their rear is not on the seat and their legs are just moving up and down and and, and basically the the back stays straight or what the horse yes. is doing and yes, I, yes. I can see how yes. that you know that that's why you use your legs yeah. half like that i think well the same thing road right motorcycle if you get on something pretty rough you you get up off the seat and let your legs right. bounce around and the same thing i've done that you know right ride a motorcycle and it's like Okay, on the streets, no big deal. You sit on the seat. Off road, yeah. Lots of times, if you get in rough terrain, you're off the seat because you just. Otherwise, man, I just throw you around all over. Yes, right. <laughs> and the horse will come for two, and you, not sit on the saddle. They will, push their run if we like that. Yeah, because imagine if you're sitting here bouncing up and down and smacking that. That's probably irritating to the horse as well. Or if you're just in, in the, the stirrups, you know, the horse could relax a little bit more. And 
and and I, I cannot imagine in the uh, Alexander time before BC uh, horseback archer actually already exists before stirrup. So I'm amazed with that fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you do that without stirrups? <laughs> You, you got to be tough, right? <laughs> yeah. How, how do you how do you hang on? <laughs> yeah, it's possible, but it's so exhausted. <laughs> yeah, but that this is this has been so interesting talk talking to you about about this. This is what I enjoy talking about archery uh, all over the world and seeing how it's different and and. You've definitely got a unique style and unique uh, stories about your archery between, you know, the the horseback archery and, and Japanese archery and all the other stuff and shooting all the different kinds of bows. And I, I think it's, it's just so cool that that you have access to all those different styles of bows. And, you know, around here, we pretty much have long bows and recurves for the traditional style and very sound to hear anybody with anything else. I might have to check and see if there's anybody else has anything like that because I think it'd be fun to go try some of those other bows. Try shooting that different style and just something different. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I'll put a I'll put a link to your YouTube channel in the description of the podcast, and, and that way it makes it easier for him to find it. Just pull up the description and click on the link, and it takes you right to your YouTube channel and. We'll, we'll let them uh, go have some fun <laughs> watching these cool videos. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, um, do you have any other cool stories uh, about maybe shooting the Japanese bow? Uh, okay, the Japanese bow is another unique thing because they have I think the the hardest way to shoot an arrow is with Japanese way because they have so many things to so many things steps like uh, how to walk, how to hold the bow, and they they also have a very long step they call hasetsu or eight step basic eight step but actually i think it's more than 18 maybe because step a step one have point a b c so hard uh, and they also uh more they also interest with something that another archery not uh, interest like a, they uh, this they they are uh, sensitive about the the sound so like uh, they have a name for the sound of the string when the shooting they call surune because yeah i i think and the ceremonial thing i think the japanese archery is uh, many affected by the cultural and the ceremonial thing because it's part of the uh, ceremony, their culture. So it's like a sacred thing to them. So beside the martial way, martial arts way in the Japanese archery, the ceremonial thing portion is uh, so big. Uh, and they also uh, make important things about the beauty the art so that's that's interest for me and the competition is what i interest in japanese archery competition they have a team competition which is i really, really have meet this in the another archery so when i try to compete for the first time in my traditional archery competition experience I hoping somebody else hit the target, which is not in another archery. In another archery, I we pray 
I hit the target and another uh, miss, uh, but in team competition, we pray so another team is also hit the target because it's a team competition. It's a very interesting feeling you know, for, for me. Yeah. And they yeah. also have uh, the clothes that, yeah, it's actually not easy to shoot with that style, uh, how to walk, how to uh, sit and stand with that. Then we call the, the the pen is called hakama, and then the the top is uh, gi, and sometimes we also use uh, kimono. Yeah, it's not easy to that. Yeah. They also have a technique how to open one uh, one hand of the kimono. Yeah, it's, it's very Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> we admit that it's another art. <laughs> That's especially yeah. unique experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I think I have a, a picture of you shooting one here. A little video of you uh, shooting it. Yeah, this is in my workshop. Yeah, I I think this I just finished a uh, Japanese bowl. So. Before going to finishing and the painting, I usually do some shooting tests. Uh, this this type is uh, not common Japanese bow. This is called Yumi Hankyu or shorter version of a Japanese bow. This is is uh, not common in the judo. Usually, this is more common uh, as a relaxation activity so people can sit and the bow is not so heavy and they are shooting this while they're drinking tea together like that the the most uh, common japanese uh, bow is more higher than this is about 2.2 meters this one is only around 160 meter 100 160 centimeter Yeah, I was just kind of looking and see because I thought it was kind of neat how you you shooting that. But uh, yeah, there's there, there's a lot of good good videos out here. We'll have to just I'll have to go check some of those out. But yeah, I just thought I'd uh, I seen you shooting one of those bows, and I thought, well, let's let's just take a look at it shooting it. And so that's a little bit shorter than the traditional bow that you you would be shooting Japanese yeah. Japanese style bow. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there is a uh, another video that I'm use uh, the 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 long uh, Japanese bow. Yeah, that is more uh, common. We call that Yumi. Yumi Dai Q. Dai is big Q is bow. So Dai Q is big bow. That's the most common we can uh, see in the Japanese archery, the Kudo or Kyujutsu. And now my my horseback archery friend is uh, challenged me to do horseback archery with Japanese bow. I think that is another another challenge for me yeah, because it's yeah. harder with that. Yeah, that, that I, would be that would be a different challenge, different bow, and still on the horse. And yes, and I took time more longer to shoot Japanese bow because the full draw is extra. It's like a shooting uh, one point a half arrow, I think. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my record for shooting with the Yumi is, uh, I can only shoot uh, six seconds. With another shorter bow, uh, I can shoot on four seconds. So two seconds is very big difference in horseback archery. Oh yeah, that's that's quite a bit of difference. You know, you, you don't think well two seconds that's not much, but when you think about it, you know a lot of events uh, are won by you know less than a half a second, you know, or less. Yeah, and yeah. you know that can that can, that can mean make a big difference. Nature in the field. And once I, I try on the uh, competition in the 
ma there is area there is some tree on it so before first target there is a tree so right. i can aiming before the tree yeah? <laughs> because the <laughs> bow tree so i need to be like a duck and after that i can just aim so that's so special uh, experience for me <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's been been real interesting talking to you. I, I learned a lot about things. It's not a horse bow. <laughs> it's it's uh, a, a, a bow. Any bow you shoot from a horse is is <laughs> is, is horse archery. <laughs> so so I so for me for me if if you use common bow on horse, then that common bow is officially horse bow now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you know, think about those things, you know, not really knowing too much about them. And uh, it, you know, now it's it's not called a horse bow. It's any bow you shoot from horses or as well. But, you know, it's, you know, a horseback archery and and whatever bow you want to use. Now, yeah. I, I, I can't see, you know, bouncing around on a uh, on a horse with a, a compound bow trying to get them loaded and you know, you'd have to have like a biscuit which traps that arrow. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd never keep it on another. None of my bows you could ride on a horse because it get bounced off right away. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 after after my friend uh, bring a compound bow and I try it, I, I was thinking if I can modify the the handle so it's uh this if this shape can like a gestational bow i think it's it will be the nice bow to shoot i think without riser just a uh, handle like a traditional bow but with the limb like a compound bow i think i think that will be a excellent bow i think <laughs> yeah the the oneida yeah, especially recurve limbs on it. There's two section limbs on them, um, uh -huh. and then if you if you get a left-handed bow and modify the grip to hold it in your 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 left yeah. hand, to your right hand, uh -huh. now you knock uh -huh. on the on the right side. Uh -huh. But but our hands need to be able to to catch to the arrow. The yeah, that uh, that's important. If we put on the window. We will uh, have uh, difficult to keep the yeah. the bow, the arrow on the bow. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it'd be as quick. You know, it's, they have a, a whisker biscuit which has to slot it so you can slide it in. But still, uh, you, uh, yeah, I it, it, it would be fun to try. <laughs> you, you know, to see how it works and it, it might work good for you, might not. Yeah. Well, don't until you try it. But I like that'd be that'd be a fun video. You know, I'll have to wait for you to post a video of you trying that maybe next time i will if i have time i will modify some bow <laughs> yeah that's that's what it's all about right <laughs> Make, yep. making whatever you have work <laughs> well it's it's been really great talking with you i i've learned a lot about uh, um the different types of bows that you use, the Japanese bow, the uh, the bows that you shoot, you know, traditionally shoot off of uh, horseback, and um, it it's just been a lot of good information. I really enjoyed the, uh, this call, and uh, um, I, I I know you'll you'll have some good videos out there. I subscribe, so I'll get notified when you post a new one. Because th this is this is interesting, uh, uh, something different that uh, we don't normally uh, see over here in the states. Yeah, and that's what's nice about what I'm doing is it's I, I talk to people all over the world. You know, yesterday I talked to a guy in the United Kingdom, and you know, tomorrow I might talk to somebody from another country, and it, it's just so fun that uh, the archery is is a sport that we all like and enjoy and have a common ground. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, and I, another, I, another thing that uh, I interest in the traditional archery is uh, beside the the technique, the competition, the culture, and so on. Uh, the the first thing that I interest uh, with the uh, traditional archery is 
the process to make it. Uh, because what the motion is because the unstrung shape is C like this. This is my right. Yep, unstrung, and then it's strong like this. For me, is I'm very amazed with that design and. Uh, actually, before I try to shoot, I try to make it. So, so that will be another interesting uh, story. The, and the use of the uh, material is also interesting because uh, the traditional archery, uh, they will use uh, horn. This horn. So this is my my uh, natural bow project. So this is will be shaped uh, same like a uh, ancient bow. So this is core is a uh, bamboo, and we will attach it with horn plate. So this is the Indonesian buffalo horn plates. And then we will uh, cover in the back side with the sinew. So this is actually my new project. Before that, I try with natural material, but I fail. So I I use uh, modern material. I think the traditional archer here and in the world, even hey, they have a traditional design, but mostly they use uh, modern material. This is made from fiberglass. Uh, but the production of the uh, uh, bow itself is interesting. Uh, either the natural material and the modern material it's very interesting for me because both is need to use a composite material and they uh, sh should uh, able to to hold to store the potential energy so big on the small size bow mostly except the japanese bow I think that's a very interesting for me. Yeah, that that'd be interesting when when you get that post your video out of you making that bow. That would be really cool to watch. Yes, yes, I I have, I have uh, uploaded on on YouTube and uh, and some product you can you can uh, visit my website numablacksmith.com. Uh, I have some product there uh, for. Various, uh, I have a various uh, bow uh, design like a Japanese bow, Turkish bow, uh, and then Tatar bow, and so on. Uh, there is also another like a quiver, yeah, uh, Turkish quiver, yeah. It's on side, and then uh, Japanese quiver on back, and Japanese quiver uh, shaped like a like a box it's not fast but i love that the shape is so beautiful i think yeah be, be, beside that factor the the beauty on the traditional archery equipment is also something that interesting for me yeah put put a link to your website in there and, and we'll actually go take a look at it if you would and and now in here there is a more popular to painting the bow. So the advanced archer here want the bow not only good to shoot but nice to watch. So many uh, now I have uh, friends that they are good at painting. They they also now uh, paint their their bow. Uh, This is my website. 
before I learn archery, I, I love uh, martial arts. So there is uh, some another martial art thing there. Uh, and I saw a traditional archery is part of martial art. In I think in, in Japan, uh, archery too, they consider the Kyudo is as a Budo or the martial art among another martial art like uh, Aikido and Karate and another thing. They also have a uh, grading in Japanese archery. Yeah, this, uh, something that I not find in uh, another traditional archery. I think that's all uh, more uh, special to Japanese. What what martial arts did you study? Uh, I mostly learn uh, silat, is Indonesian uh, martial art, and then uh, yeah, mostly silat, and then I learned some uh, hema or European uh, sword uh, technique, and then this. Uh, uh, traditional archery. I consider traditional archery as martial art. And a and lot of us do. Um, I studied Hapkido for about 20 years. Um, so I just kind of curious is... which one it was you did. <laughs> <laughs> and in traditional archery, we have some uh, technique uh, like a shooting with swords too. Oh, yeah. Well, here, yeah, here's, like, I got your site up here. Um, ah, yeah. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Looks like a, a wood quiver for it as well. Yeah. It's archery category. Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah. Here's some of your, your products out here. And I'll leave yeah. a link to your, your website in the description as well. So, you know, if anybody's interested in getting any of these, um, you know, there's there's different different bows and stuff here, and oh yeah, pretty pretty cool all the all the stuff you have down here. Yeah, most mostly in the international traditional archery when they compete, they use traditional clothes. So that's also interesting. <laughs> yeah. When I compete in the Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, we compete with the traditional clothes each country, and then after that, in the night, they bring us to the center of the city with traditional clothes. That, that's very wonderful experience. <laughs> the competition is called Feti uh, Kupasi. They celebrate uh, the uh, conquer the Istanbul. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I'd everybody take a quick look at your uh, website. It's got a lot of cool stuff out there, it looks like. Yeah, that's some pretty cool stuff. Really, really interesting. And uh, um, like I said, we'll leave, leave some links in here. So anybody interested in big, big talk about uh, um we talked about all this kind of stuff and it's like now they know where to go get it and put get get on it and it's it's pretty cool so yeah and um what would you say to somebody that's thinking about getting into um you know one of the arts you you do you know like the japanese uh, archery mm -hmm. uh can you can you repeat oh yeah what would you say to somebody that's thinking about getting into archery in like in one of the disciplines that you you do yes i i think it is uh if another friend's interest with traditional archery i think just try i just try it uh i think it's a wonderful experience and uh you 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 cannot uh it's it's not boring. The it's it's very fun activity and interesting, and the you also have a sensation of cultural thing. I think uh, that's very wonderful experience for me. And besides the technical thing, like and the technical thing itself is so many interesting thing. Yeah, we can shoot many position, yeah, front, side, back, 
milling position or like the kabak position and then we have mini grip yeah like that and we have fast shooting technique shower technique fly shooting technique horseback technique we also have a jar market technique we also have a curriculum to shoot with armor shoot with traditional clothes and we have a many like a quiver side quiver back quiver sword quiver and so on i think it's very interesting so actually friends there if you interest with traditional archery just get it it i guarantee you will be have fun in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i'm i'm sure that they that have fun you know if you're interested in archery hey you know find somebody around you that it's it's doing it and say hey I, i'm thinking about starting archery and you know somebody comes in, hey i'm thinking about starting archery what do i do and, and you'd help them out or, or any archer you know if somebody comes up to me or anybody else's hey i'm thinking about doing ar archery uh, what do i do come with me here let's get you started <laughs> yeah. i think many many friends archer in the, in the united states they they often training together with the modern archery and various uh, traditional archery culture yeah, japanese archer going archer together with the modern archer they shooting together in the red i think the united states is a very many background people join together there so i think i think this is this nice training in the united states <laughs> Yeah, because you just there's just so many different ones, and the guy you shoot next to, you know, he may be a better shot than you. Just figure out what he's doing. You know, look at him, and and you know, if, if you're a better shot, then he has a question, help him out. And that's just just the way majority of the archers are. There's going to be a few that aren't, but most of us are. Well probably let you go to so get back because I know you got some training to do later today and um... yes 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 this is uh yeah the the Indonesian here is it's almost midnight <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah I better let you go <laughs> yeah you got you got you gotta go to sleep so you can get up and... oh it's all in the very late night <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> Special for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I appreciate it because it's uh, well, we're 12 hours apart because it's almost noon here. <laughs> so half a day, half a day apart. <laughs> uh, yes, half a day apart. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for inviting yeah. me in this. Uh, yeah, thanks wonderful. for being on. I really appreciate it. My name is Roy Canterbury. I'm your host today on Arch Talk 101. And stay tuned for the next one. We have more exciting shows coming up. Um, don't know how we're going to beat this one, but we seem to always get better each one. So stay tuned to the next one, and we'll talk to you later. <laughs>